arriving at Phuket Airport, you can already see you're on a paradise island. This is your first step to a holiday of a lifetime. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Burgers, beers, boys, done. Raw and cocktail. Or where the nightmares begin. That flu yesterday. I've missed my flight. So not good. It's where cultural differences uh, and the language barrier sorry. We don't need to go to the hospital. can trip up even the most experienced traveller. We are not allowed to stay here anymore. We would like to go to Bali. And remind you, you're thousands of miles from home. I'm going home tomorrow. But you're in safe hands, as the airport staff are just waiting to solve your problems. Welcome. It's going to be another busy day for us. You've made me a fighter all the time. <laughs> So put your seat back and tray tables in the upright position as we arrive inside Phuket Airport. When you think of holidays, you think of huge, majestic planes soaring through the sky and landing in exotic foreign climes. Just like these bad boys arriving in Phuket International today, jam-packed with tourists dying to start their holidays in the Thai sun. And whilst all these happy holiday makers disembark, a team of ground crew get busy with servicing the aircraft and unloading the luggage. Unfortunately, though, this morning, that's where things come a little unstuck. Due to a power cut last night, the information screens in baggage reclaim have gone down, which is causing just a few problems this morning. Normally in our country we have screens, so... With flight loads of passengers now unsure of where to find their luggage, the IT department is furiously working behind the scenes to try to restore the computer system, but it's leaving passengers less than happy this morning. Oh, there's a big chaos. On the single belt, there are four flights coming in. We are waiting for the luggage for the last 15 minutes and still our luggage is not started. It's, it's, it's a complete mess. We all tired, we travel the whole night. We're coming from Delhi to Bangkok, from Bangkok here. Look at this. I think they should improve the system. That's what I feel. With the computer system in meltdown, the airport staff are on the ground physically directing passengers to their luggage. But with multiple flights offloading passengers at the same time, the crowds are now gathering around the single carousel in use, and Zhang from customer services is right in the thick of it. They're trying to fix the system since last night until now. What can we do? We couldn't do anything except like trying to help. So right now we're all gathering, like providing information to passengers like manually first. This is a painstaking task of matching passengers with their luggage from a long list of flights. The information on the screen doesn't show the right information. So we feel like, OK, this is going to be another busy day for us because there's a lot of passengers who are going to get confused. We try to fix it like as soon as possible. Is it going to come out? Will it not? Who knows? It's a gamble at this point. <laughs> With the system out of service, passengers are totally lost in baggage reclaim. Hi. Excuse me. Hi. I was looking for luggage. Which, uh, From uh, Singapore. Singapore. Hi. Wow. Five seven five zero. Please mm. check number four. Number four. four. Thank you so Thank much. You. But with the old school list system just about working, this pair of honeymooners get to leave the baggage reclaim nightmare. But for Zhang and the team, those planes are just going to keep on coming. The flight is coming in every, like, I think 20 minutes, so I don't know, we need to fix it now. <laughs> We're trying to. With a constant flow of passengers arriving, it means the crowd around the carousel keeps growing. And as much as Zhang and the team are helping, they're not going to clear the backlog of passengers until those screens are up and running. I wonder if they've tried turning them off and on again. Also arriving are old friends Steve and Alan, who live on opposite sides of the planet but have chosen to meet in Phuket. Uh, I live in Dubai and he's from sunny Yorkshire in Leeds in the UK. Sunny? Yeah, it's all right, sunny. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as sunny as Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> so we've known each other about 20 years and we've just been going on about going on holiday. So, uh, yeah, here we are. So we decided to uh, come to some time. We are doing Tom, first of all, so we're going to leave here. 
get a taxi down to Patong, and then we head up to Bangkok for five days. Yeah. Do uh, a bit of shopping, a uh, bit of sightseeing, and quite a lot of party. Not the first time though, because I normally come every year. So I'm here with my mum and dad. They have flown in from London to meet us, and we're just going to like go party with them. Of course. As you and your mate plan your partying holiday in exotic Thailand, the first thing to do is invite your mum and dad, Ovs. We're still waiting for his bag, still... by the way. Oh, matching luggage. You got yours then? Yeah, oh, we're in. We're good. Oh, we're in. Okay, we're in. good. Looks like mum and dad have it sussed. They've got their bags and they're ready and raring to get on it at the hotel bar. But Alan isn't so lucky. No, it's not mine. We've been in Pattaya once before with okay. Stephen, actually. <laughs> we achieved an education in Pattaya that we didn't expect, so we have no idea what's going to happen this week. They are hilarious, fun. It's all right, they'll be in bed. Gins and Estella, and we're, like, booming. <laughs> they'll be in bed by eight. You've been here six times? Six times, I think yeah. I've been here... I think I've been here five times before, and we've never actually done any sightseeing. Because generally, you know, you stay up till 2 a.m. I'm lying, that's like five, and then you sleep for a bit. And we never see anything, so this time we're gonna go and see yeah, the we, palace we, we and the, the, the Buddhas, like all the cultural stuff. Somehow, I'm finding it hard to believe that this is going to be the holiday you get to see the temples. Finally! We are good to go. We are good, we are to, good go. to go. So, we're gonna leave the airport, taxi, hotel, yeah. quick shower, yeah. change, yeah. out. Burgers, beers, boys, done. Yeah. Uh, and parents. It would be hilarious. <laughs> We're long suffering, but great fun. <laughs> so, as Steve, his pal, and his parents head off to freshen up for the long night ahead, we'll check in on these party animals when they return for their flight out of Phuket. Someone who is definitely not here to party is triathlete and airport regular Lucy. Flights at 9 day, and that's a lot of people to get through. <laughs> I come through this airport so often. It's always a last minute panic in Asia. They never have enough deaths on, but they, they never seem that bothered by it. They'll just, just slowly get it done, like everything in Asia, organised chaos. Lucy is a triathlete who regularly spends five months of the year in Phuket training for the sport. She also has her own ice cream business, which means when she is back home, it's all about 99s and chocolate sauce. I was in Cambodia uh, in January. I went up there from this airport. Before that, I went up north again in Thailand. Um, I go down to either Kuala Lumpur or Singapore quite a lot for racing, and I've got friends there. So, yeah, I'm here at least once a month, at least. <laughs> So today I'm flying to Singapore with my husband and friends. We're heading down to watch Super League Triathlon. We've got a relay team entering and we're really going to give it a good go. It's a two-day competition. So I think, yeah, I think we've got just as good a chance as any. Oh, we're waiting for check-in, but I, I guess there's two people on the desk and there is a long line of people. So waiting to check in Tim's bike, waiting to get our boarding passes. But we're not moving, I don't think. Oh no, we've moved a foot. <laughs> I've done a lot of Ironman 70.3 distance, which is the middle distance. I've probably done four or five of those. I'm moving over to a bit of cycling racing now, so three-day cycle events. So I'd say with those and that, I've probably done 20, 30 competitions now. All this talk of exercise makes me want a kebab. Is that weird? It just takes a lot of dedication, a lot of training. Um, you've got to really, really love it, which I do. I've got a really supportive husband, great bag carrier, great cheerer. I don't know, I love sports. I, I love everything about it. I'm not one person to go on holiday and lay by the pool. I can't do that. People think I'm a bit crazy training every day, but for me, that's my holiday. But it does take a lot of hard work and dedication, yeah, for sure. We're in. We were the quickest people. They just gave us our boarding cards. That was so pointless. They should have just had a little check-in desk, but we're in. She seems to think we'll make it through immigration, so we're going to run through there and hopefully make the flight. So Lucy, Hubby and their mate now need to sprint through to their flight. But that's all right, it'll be like a gentle warm-up for them. Back in baggage reclaim, the constant flow of flights landing is adding to Zhang and the team's problems. Yeah, this one will let her in like five minutes. As the information screens are down and the IT department are manically working to fix them. Many airlines coming in and now it's quite delayed, so they need to 
do it as fast as possible. Just system breakdown, we, the information is not on screen, we need to print it out first, uh, for you. Are you 752? Which flight are you? It's now up to the airport staff to physically match passengers and their luggage, but this makeshift system is slow and painful. We landed at night. More than about 40 minutes that we are waiting for our luggage. There's a lot of issues. All 248, pick up your baggage in belt number four. I think we're sharing the belts for a lot of flights together. Initially, the airport staff decided to open a single carousel to try and create a single destination for all passengers to collect luggage. But now, with so many flights landing, they have no choice but to open multiple belts. PG214, please wait for a little bit. You will pick up your baggage at belt number four, but we need to finish the first flight first. Right now, we just print out the flight that matched to the belt because the information we got is quite wrong because there's so many flights coming in. This one might be 10 minutes after this flight. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll take care of you guys. Unfortunately, with so many flights coming so fast, the printed information Zhang and her team are receiving is already out of date and causing further problems. We need to tell our passenger, guide them to the correct belt. In every belt, the airline staff will be there for a passenger in case they lost a baggage or whatever happened right now. My friend, the baby trap. I had like two hours of sleep, the kids were flown all night. This was not checked in, this was given, hand given at the gate. Flight has been in six hours, seven hours. We just got our bags, but now we're waiting for the stroller and nobody knows where it is. It's quite chaotic here, so we have to wait and find out, I guess. We have to think positive. I think we'll get it back, but it might take a bit of time and I would just like to go to the hotel now. What happened? Yeah. You're in the club? Oh, okay. Finally, the screens kick back in, but the baggage reclaim troubles are by no means over. See, they have the information back up, but it's not the right information yet. Which isn't helping anyone. Ten would be like, okay, everything's fully recovered. That would be ten, but now it's a seven. I think it's like a game, like a puzzle. It depends on how quick you can strategize the game. But it shouldn't happen quite often. <laughs> Well, it looks like you're starting to win because some of the passengers are finally getting to leave the airport. Yes, the pram is there. Off we go. Pram in hand, this family can finally start their holiday. And let's not forget about this chap. After 30 minutes, I'm so happy. I'm going to book it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good times. Sadly, though, he missed the memo that it's pronounced Phuket. However, the power cut has now created a new problem. It has been a while now. I think the governor of the province knows it as well. The passenger going to go to the city late and it's going to affect the traffic for sure. So now, with the governor of the whole of Phuket pushing for an end to the problem, the team really needs to get this sorted. Phuket is known as the Pearl in the Andaman Sea, thanks to its beautiful beaches and warm waters. The perfect place to relax and take it easy. However, it's also got a cracking nightlife, and it's the like of Patong's Bangla Road that have the tourists flocking to the west coast of the island. That said, no guesses as to what these two from Sweden... My name is Sabrina. And my name is Sofia. ...have got planned whilst they're in Phuket. Drink every night. <laughs> we got great stamina. We can, we're going to party every night. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think they were here for the temples either. Cousins. We're cousins. Yeah, and so our... we've known each other our whole our life. Yeah. yeah, our mothers and sisters. Yeah. Oh, that's how cousins work. I've always wondered. We've got friends that have been here. So we've heard a lot about Phuket. It's so. always the same thing, like we just party and I don't know. And it's always just the two of us. <laughs> yeah. We never bring anyone else with us. Like me and her, we're the same person. We think like, so we tell each other to shut up like every five minutes. So yeah. We fight like every, every day, day. <laughs> but not big fights. We yeah. fight like, a, like an old married couple. Yeah. yeah, when I saw you, I thought, old married couple. We've made a bucket list for this trip. We want to do the bungee jump, see yeah, the tigers. Yeah, she's scared of the sea. Yeah, so, I can't swim. Yeah, she can't so, swim. <laughs> yeah, I can swim, but I'm not so good at swimming, 
so I'm going to try and swim. <laughs> Not a bad idea when you're baking on a tropical island surrounded by, you know, the ocean. We're really excited. We're, We're just really tired because uh, we haven't slept in like 24 hours. <laughs> I don't even know because the time difference, I don't even know what time it is. Actually, no. I think we're just going to sleep the whole day today till tomorrow and then we can stop partying every night. Oh, I have no doubt, ladies. Party on, dudes. On average, Phuket International sees 20 people a day miss flights. That's 600 incredibly forgetful people a month. And at departures, we meet Ronnie, who's dropping off his best mate, Tim, who falls into this category. My brother gonna miss his flight tomorrow again. <laughs> I told him he irresponsible one more again. Hey, if you miss your flight, I think you might. Hey. <laughs> yep, from that little rap, it sounds like it's not the first time either. Irresponsible. Uh, I'm going back to Afghanistan. Uh, I'm a contractor, I work there. Tim works for the military in Afghanistan and is in Phuket to visit his mate, Ronnie, who lives here. And it looks like their partying may have got the better of them because he's now overdue getting back to base. I was supposed to be there, what, two days ago? <laughs> so I called my boss and told him that I had to extend. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for it, but I don't know. We'll see when I get there. <laughs> what actually happened is that Tim popped along to the local club where Ronnie was emceeing last night and a couple of beers turned into a lot more and here we are. You gotta, you gotta know how to control yourself. This guy don't know how to control himself, so it's the night this life. is what it's happened. It's the night, the night life. life out here, so. I've already changed my flight twice already since I've been here, but it's OK. This one was supposed to be at 4.50. I got here at like 4.44. <laughs> it was like five minutes before yeah. the flight, so. It was no point of coming. So I'm hoping it's not going to be the same this time, but who knows. For someone who's now missed two flights in a row trying to get back to work, Tim seems pretty chilled about the whole situation. So I'm going to end up just flying out tomorrow, like I said. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. So that means we've got to party again tonight? I hope not. I pray I don't miss this flight. I pray he do. I so need somebody to call me and like wake me up in the morning or something, because I can't miss another flight. I'm going to watch TV tonight. Netflix and chill, that's it. Hang on. In the UK, Netflix and chill means the total opposite to a restful night's sleep, so good luck with that. I'm not going to stay out as late as I did last see, night. See, so he said maybe he's going to stay home and watch a movie. Like see, I 2 o'clock, 2 a.m.-ish. That's about it. See, see, I change. See, irresponsible. I think I'll make it tomorrow. Those two would benefit from being mates with this fella from the Tourist Assistance Center. Hi, my name is Patera Pongwiyapan. You can call me Doe. This is my five top tips to travel through the airport. First one, unexpected situation could happen anytime. So just make sure that you leave your house like earlier or like two hours before your flight. Just make sure that you get there on time. The second one is make sure that all the documents is required and you have all of it. For example, like your visa, your passport, and sometimes your money. And three, once you get through the visa immigration, just recheck all of the visa stamp just in case that they've got like a wrong stamp so you could like fix it right at that time. So you don't have to stay in Thailand for like for forever. No, I don't think that would be a problem for some people. And also like one of the most important thing for you know for customers to travel through the airport just to make sure that you don't drink and don't get drunk before you fly. Oh I think that might be a problem for some people. And before you leave the airport just to make sure that you don't forget anything. Thank you. This is Linda from Sweden, a single mum on a well-deserved break from home who's taken Dome's advice to the extreme. I was, yeah, tried to check in. I showed her my, my ticket and she was like, dear, this is not today, this is in November. I was like, what? No, that's not right. And then I looked at it and I was like, <laughs> But I don't know how it could be so wrong. Like November, it's crazy. Yeah, you could say that, because Linda is now over six months early for her flight, which is a problem for the young mum, as she has two little ones back in Sweden and eagerly awaiting the return of their mummy. I had a good holiday, but now I miss my kids. I just want to go home. They stay with their father, and 10 days is a lot of time without them. So I check now, and there's one flight tomorrow. 
10, 10 p.m. There is one flight today as well, but it's way too expensive. It's not worth it. With it now a respectable hour in the morning back in Sweden, Linda is able to speak to her ex-partner to fill him in. I explained to him what happened. He was like, relax. I explained to the kids. The thing is, you know, when you, when you speak to your children and you hear them cry because they miss you, then it's so hard, it's so hard. It's just this mama guilt feeling. It's, I hate it. <laughs> But my mother told me, you're always going to feel like that. It's like, that's the thing that comes with <laughs> Spurred on by the phone call, Linda finally has a plan of action. I think I'll just go with the one tomorrow. I'm going to book that ticket now. It was the best ticket, the fastest, the cheapest. I have a ticket now. I'm going home tomorrow! and will leave this very tired mum to head off and rest before her flight home in the morning. Our triathlete Lucy and husband Neil have arrived back into Phuket from Singapore after competing in two races, and it looks like she did pretty well. The world's biggest trophy, but it's so unique. The little map of where we were. And I came second overall behind a pro, so I am happy. I'm not a pro by any means, so to finish second behind a pro, I am over the moon with. How proud is he? I bet there were tears. I did, just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit as she went past at the end. Back to training tomorrow morning, because I've got a race starting on Friday. It's called the Tour of Phuket, so on the Friday is a time trial, and you each do a five-kilometre loop as fast as you can. The next day is 140 kilometres. I'm hoping... A podium on one day would be good. Overall would be amazing. <laughs> but Lucy's isn't the only bike arriving into Phuket International today. Looks like there's competition for those podium places ahead of the race. My name's Jules and we've flown in from Hong Kong. I'm here for the Tour of Phuket, which is a three-day cycling race. Brits, Aussies, uh, all from people from around the world, French, all, all over. So, uh, yeah, real, real multicultural race. Well, it looks like there's about 20 bikes. Um, quite often when we come around Asia, our bikes get a bit lost in transit, so it's always a matter of waiting to see if your bike actually makes it to the event. Uh, fingers crossed for good baggage handlers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It's nice to be able to ride in a country that's got a few mountains. Singapore gets very flat, so very excited, and it's always good having a good weekend with our friends from our cycling club. So Lucy will be competing against pro teams and cycling clubs. Fingers crossed for another trophy. With the power cut at Phuket International still ongoing, two sets of doubles who haven't been caught up in baggage reclaim hell are these expats now living in Singapore. We're here for on a tennis bonding weekend to improve our tennis and have a nice girly weekend away from the kids <laughs> and the husbands. husbands. Well, we're staying in Outrigger Laguna and they've got four outdoor courts, but they've also got an indoor court. So if it's raining, we can still train. And so we do two hours in the morning of training with the coach there and we do two hours in the afternoon of match play. In a massage in between. <laughs> <laughs> Get you lot living the dream. And it's, and it's a, a, a good weekend that's not too expensive. This is lovely here. Yeah, yeah. it's much more humid in Singapore. And it's sweaty. Well, that's 15 love to Phuket, thanks to Singapore's muggy weather at the moment. Come all the way from Bangladesh for a cricket tournament, and it's a qualification for our Australian Championship. So I'm a triathlete, so I'll be doing swimming, biking, running, anything from open water. It should be fun. We come over twice a year, really, and we go to the gyms in Geelong. So we are mainly here for training and diving. Departures is as busy as ever as we find these dudes in their surfboards heading for Bali. What we've been doing in Phuket, not very much, to be honest. We've just been chilling on the beach. We had the Koh Lanta. Um, Which is so nice. Yeah, Koh Lanta's lush. Just having a little break from surfing. Yeah, having a little break from surfing. Yeah. Like, there's no waves in Thailand. Bit of drinking, it's been <laughs> good. After five years together, this is their first time traveling. But the question is, are they driving each other crackers? Yeah, sometimes. 
I think in Thailand we have a little bit, but just because we haven't been with like other people, it's just been us two. It's, been, but it's, uh, the it's duo. been great as well. Like no doubt about it. She's she's the no, booker. I, yeah, I she's do. I prefer doing it. Yeah. Because. I book really nice accommodations. Holds on to the passports. Yeah, I'm um, like, I've got the folder and everything. I'm the navigator. It's my job. <laughs> Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Whenever he's navigating, we always get lost, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a ghost I don't organize it. Find it. However, when you choose to travel around with everything but the kitchen sink, it can kind of hit you in the wallet sometimes. Some airlines ask you how many surfboards you've actually got in there, get you to open it up, and then uh, charge you per surfboard, which is really annoying, so they should stop doing that, um, please. <laughs> uh, I've got two in there at the moment. But luckily for these two at this airport, they charge by weight, so it's just a matter of going to the oversized baggage desk to see if there's any excess charges. It was just... Just under. Under the weight limit, yeah. Surf's up for a happy ending after all. Cheers. And with their cumbersome boards checked in, it's off to the departure lounge they go. Out on the tarmac, engineer Sirote and his team of mechanics are on standby to give this landing Boeing 747 a full inspection and have it ready to fly within the hour. I go to the parking area 10 minutes before for check everything in, at the parking area. This is so he can carry out what's known as an FOD, or free of debris check, to make sure there's nothing on the ground that could damage the plane as it comes into park. And one of the team's busy mechanics is Nafat, who set her sights on her job as a young girl. I have been working here for two years. That's before I'm working here. At first, I want to be an aircraft mechanic because I'm looking at the people at the airport, uh, they walk around, shake the aircraft, and I think, why they so very cool and smart? And after that, I decided to study at Aircraft Civil Aviation Training Center. Nafat's first job is to perform an exterior walk-around inspection of the aircraft. When aircraft park, we do walk around check and follow the checklist, such as engine, wheel, landing gear, main gear, stabilizer, everything. And if they find anything untoward, the plane will not be allowed to fly. After that, I have to go in the cabin. If we found any defect, we have to inform with the captain. When, when passenger on board, some defect exists, and that item is no go item. That's very serious. It's the engineer's responsibility that the entire plane, from toilets to engines, are in working order. Before I have to depart, walk around check again and again, because it's the important thing based on the safety first. Right, do you remember Steve and Alan in Phuket with Steve's mum and dad to party and soak up the Thai culture? Well, here they are creeping back into the airport, looking a little delicate, and I don't think they got into this state visiting temples. Um, got in a bit later than we were expecting. Yeah. Um, we then had an issue with packing Steve's case because there was just too much shit, so we had to bin a load of stuff. And then we ordered a taxi, which was half an hour late, yeah. and then he decided to take the scenic route. Yeah. Which was through, lovely. Which was lovely, but completely impractical. Yeah. And, yeah, we've literally just got out, Checked in, yeah. and now we're um, got a sweat on. Got a sweat on. <laughs> we can fly to Bangkok. It's been carnage, utter carnage. We've parted a bit too much. We have. Um, <laughs> we've had. I'm very tired. We've we've had things that <laughs> probably can't be said on camera. No. To be fair, and it just ended up being messy. Um, drag queens, bars, boys. Because I had to drag this one off of stage last night for dancing. Yeah, Bangkok. Here we go. I don't think Bangkok is ready for you two boys. Mum and Dad had a great time with us. Uh, they came out with us every single night. Uh, I think they hit midnight and then they were Cinderella at home. So that was really nice. Yeah. yeah they had a and really le left us there. to it. Yeah, they left, left us, us to it, it. Which, is, which is nice, you know? But my mum is naturally a queen. So lots of drag queens and her photo, oh, her she photo loved opportunities it. was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I obviously live in Dubai and Alan lives in Leeds. So it's been really good to just be able to... But this is what we do, isn't it? I know. You know, twice a year we catch up. 
and go crazy. Maybe. Fabulous. High five. <laughs> Boom. Watch out, Bangkok. Steve and Alan are coming. After a power cut brought mayhem to baggage reclaim, the IT department has finally solved the issue. Not only are the display screens back up and running, but they're displaying the correct information too. Finally, much to Zhang's delight. That's the technique. Oh, here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. GG is so, uh, GG210 is on. Yeah. It's a good progress in an hour. I think they, it's going to be like fully recovered. But as things get back to normal with the baggage carousels, another passenger problem presents itself in the shape of a lost bag. One passenger who lost her bag and she started crying. You have to go to someone because in this bus they wait hours. She was waiting here for a while now, I think. Uh, maybe her bag is somewhere else in this world, I'm not sure. What I can do is just help her to report to the airline staff so they can track her bag. Normally, this would be an issue for baggage services, who would contact the passenger's airport of origin to track the case. But this passenger isn't sure if her boyfriend has it, but he's already gone through customs. Maybe he take them, because I can't find him. Maybe he take and go inside. Can you wait for me right here? I go outside after, OK? Zhang must now find this passenger's Russian tour operator outside the airport to help reunite her with her luggage and her absent boyfriend. Now she followed the staff to check if he brings her baggage or not, and then he will come back. If he hasn't got her baggage, he had to report to the airline staff. But luckily, girlfriend, boyfriend and bag are soon reunited outside the airport and they seem over the moon to finally have found each other again, which brings the end to a long, hard day for Zhang. The baggage situation is completed now because the information on the screen is back up. So we be fine now. We just go back to work. <laughs> That's it. And while we let these two lovebirds whisper sweet nothings into each other's ear at the start of their romantic tie break, we'll let Zhang have the last word. What a day. <laughs> Across the island, our pair of tennis doubles from Singapore are truly slumming it at the outrigger Laguna Paquette Beach Resort, where they're training hard. Well, that is between the cocktails and the massages. We've got a two-hour lesson with Sean, and then we're playing a match, hopefully, this afternoon. I don't know what we're doing this morning. I think we're doing serves. Not so sure, ladies. Looks more like synchronised Bugs Bunny impressions to me. Look at that, you're all in sync. Oh, my God. Animal impressions finished. The first exercise from Sean the trainer is all about accuracy. Simply hit the chair with the ball. Who's going to get the target? Hear me. Go on, Nettie. Oh, dear. Gemma, you're going to get it? Go on. Nearly. Oh, you've got to get that target going. Maybe their game is being impaired by their antics yesterday. Everybody concentrates like twice as hard. You saw us today, we had cocktails yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and mystery solved. Sometimes it helps us, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Just drink lots board. of fluids, have your electrolytes, and you're good to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there were electrolytes and espresso martinis. In fairness, this lot are on a relaxing break, so fill your boots, ladies. After three hours of playing that, I think we'd say we're good for nothing in the afternoon. <laughs> Which just leaves time for the last game of the day. How many tennis balls can you balance on your racket? You'd think with the power cut over and things back to normal in arrivals, that would be the end of the luggage issues. But think again, because this Canadian seems to have lost a bag. I flew with, I was supposed to fly with Air Canada, they're the best company in the world. And I missed my flight because I had a couple beers, <laughs> too many. Now this sounds all too familiar. Remind you of anyone we know? My brother gonna miss his flight tomorrow again. <laughs> I told him he irresponsible one more again. Hey, if you miss your flight, I think you might. Hey. Anyway, do carry on. I don't have my bag. <laughs> Probably on the flight you missed then, yeah? So instead of flying to Seoul, I had to flew to Dubai and then they lost my baggage somewhere. I'm not mad because I know it's my fault. It's on me, so I was never mad at anybody. I was always super polite. Jean-Philippe is from Quebec and is a professional American footballer for the Ottawa Red Blacks. 
this is off season for us right now. So uh, training camp starts in uh, mid-May. So I got a couple more weeks to get ready for the next season. But I'm on vacation as well, so I'm not too stressed about it. Some people get they get they freaked out about about their bags, but it's somewhere. I know it's it's probably on its way to, to Phuket. When I was boarding the flight in Dubai, she said uh, that my my baggage was on board, but I knew she was wrong the whole time. <laughs> Unfortunately, until the bag surfaces from whichever flight it's been put on in whatever country it's arrived in, Phuket International can only offer to get the bag to him as soon as it arrives. I think the first thing I'm going to do is buy a SIM card, so I'll be able to call back home and see if they can do something with my bag, or maybe they can go on the computer back home and look where the bag is. Once he's got his phone sorted, his next mission is clothing. I'm going to try to go shop somewhere tonight. I'm going to go buy a pair of shorts and a T-shirt because it's like 30 degrees outside, so I'll see how it goes, but hey, I'm on vacation, I can't complain. Thank you very much, guys. Thank bye bye. You. And that is the right, upbeat attitude in this situation. Chill out and take it easy. However, chilling out too much can cause this. Hey, Mr. Fry, sorry, Mr. Reese. How the cross now? Back with Lucy, our trophy-wielding triathlete, who's in Phuket to train and compete. And with two days of the tour of Phuket under her belt, she's very pleased with her performance in the bike race time trial. Final day today, big day. To come second yesterday and to hopefully keep that up today so I get on the podium, I'd be more than happy with that. That'd be a good couple of days' work. As a triathlete, Lucy's used to swimming and running as part of the race. So round about now, she's desperate to get off the saddle and into the water. Being a triathlete, you do come out here not really knowing the rules properly, not really knowing what you should and shouldn't do. So I just got to try, fit in, under the radar, do my best. <laughs> but she has a secret weapon. I love climbing hills, I don't know why. Maybe it's a Devon thing, there's just constant hills where I live. Let's hope those hills can thin out the herd. But finally, it's time to go. And with a cheery wave, Lucy is off, taking on a 90-mile course with temperatures of up to nearly 40 degrees and strong winds forecast, there has to be an easier way to see Phuket. Always nervous, yeah. Some of those hills she'll probably reach up to about 80 kilometers an hour. So sometimes thoughts creep in is the, if there's going to be a crash. That worries me. They're used to doing those speeds, but all the same, it's Thailand. You don't know what's going to run out from the side of the road or anything. So it's the unexpected, I suppose. It's not long before there are accidents and breakdowns. But did Lucy's Devon Hill riding help at all? Mentally, it was tough. The last 30 k's, I was on my own, which is really difficult in this wind and stuff. So your body's tired, I was cramping. Then your mind goes to some really dark places of, I don't want to do this anymore, I just want to stop. With the racers clocking up an average speed of 35 kilometers an hour around the 137 kilometer course, Lucy makes the finish line in three hours, four minutes. Oh, my God, I can't believe how fast she was. Me, personally, I would have skipped the bike race and gone straight for the massage by the pool, but, you know, each to their own. Uh, why am I doing this? So proud of you, darling. That's what so kept me going. Oh. I thought I wanted to give up, and I thought, I can't. Neil's at the end. <sighs> I think that was one of the toughest things I've ever done, actually. I'm not going to lie, that was brutal. Even with everything hurting and gagging for rehydration, it turns out those Devonshire Hills definitely helped. So today I came third. So I don't know what that makes me overall, but I don't really care. I'm happy to have another medal, so Two days, two medals. Can't get better than that for me. <laughs> Glowing after her victory, I think it's obvious that Lucy's already planning her next challenge.
Out on the airfield, Sirote and his team are ready for the arrival of another Thai Airways flight that is taxiing into its terminal gate. But there's something wrong. Normally, the aircraft follow the docking light. Sometimes it's suddenly uh, inoperating. The docking lights above the terminal gates are there to guide the aircraft into their parking spot and tell them when to stop. But right now, it's up to Nafat to guide the massive plane across the tarmac. So I have to measure the aircraft to direct the aircraft to stop. It's all hands on deck to get the plane safely home, and Sirote lends a hand too. Once parked, the team's 60-minute countdown begins, and they get on with their inspection and refueling. If aircraft need to refill, we have to get the final refill from captain. With no time to waste, Nafat is able to speak directly to the captain from the tarmac to discuss how much fuel is needed for the flight ahead. Uh, we are flying direct to Bangkok today with a flight time of 12 hours. They took some fuel from Bangkok already so that we don't have to spend much time refueling here. You have to calculate the performance of the power of aircraft for required for takeoff in the each flight. You have to look at the weather. The weather today is... Uh, Quite, uh, quite strong wind. And it's these potential issues that the ground crew have to take into account when refueling the plane. After done everything, okay, we get the reset, uh, reset to fail uh, to send with the captain. That's it. Fail is about 100. That's why you are think not more than. So, with 15 minutes left before the flight must depart, it looks like the team are bang on time yet again. Thanks to these guys, over 40,000 people a day get to their destination safely. But the Land of Smiles treatment doesn't end when the plane leaves the gate. Finally, when a half is ready for flight, we assist flight crew for a half pushback and engine start. And we salute our crew and passenger. I thank you, the passenger, for flying with Thai, for flying safe, and for coming to Phuket.